Get ready for Mikey Sen TV. Four, three, two, one, zero. Hey, what's going on, guys? How's everyone doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Well, I'm trying something different on this video. Why? I have no idea, and it's probably going to look horrible. It's probably not framed correctly, but I'm using my phone instead of my normal uh, action camera. I always use my action camera. And I thought that I would try something different and just use my phone. Uh, I may be cut off. I can't see the picture because I'm using the good camera and the screen is facing that way, so... Anyways, today, guys, we're going to review, talk about, discuss, not really review, but just talk about a movie. And what is that movie today, guys? It is An American Werewolf in Paris, and it came out in 1997. Now, if you ever watch my videos where I talk about movies and discuss them and all that kind of stuff, you know that I usually have my handy dandy trusty notebook. Well, I have handy dandy trusty notes. Right here. Okay? I look at them. I'm not a professional. I'm not going to remember all this. Look at all that. I ain't going to remember all that. So we're going to look at it and we're going to discuss this movie and see what I think about it. Alright? So let's talk about it. Here it goes. It stars. And I'm going to butcher the names. I'm bad with names. It stars Tom Everett Scott as Andy McDermott. Julie Dippley Del Delphi as Surfy Piggott. Vince Vidaliff as Brad. Phil Buckman as Chris. Pierre Casso as Claude. Now, let's go over the story, or you can call it the plot synopsis, whatever you want to call it. Let's talk about it. The daughter of the werewolf from American Werewolf in London is alive and living in Paris, where her mother from the first film and stepfather are trying to make a cure for her. Disease. That's right. Being a werewolf must be a disease. Soon, she crosses paths with an American trio of adventure-seeking travelers. Not long until they all have to battle a secret society of werewolves who have a drug which will allow them to change without a full moon. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that amazingly crazy? Alright, I'll get back to this page in a moment. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about things that I didn't like or I found strange or odd or just whatever, you know. Here we go. And they're in no particular order, but here we go. Number one, the movie. After watching the original film my whole life, this film was a disappointment in 1997 and really still is today. Number two, the CGI. A time or two it works, but mostly it's overused and just not done well. You should always stick to practical effects as much as you can. Number three, the werewolf design. Have I seen worse? Yes, but these were not great. At times they have moments, other times they don't. Uh, they just don't have that wow factor to them like in the original movie and a lot of it could be because of the CGI. Number four, the overuse of comedy. There's a very fine line in horror that you don't cross. I understand that this movie is also labeled kind of comedy horror and I believe even the original American Werewolf in London is kind of labeled as such. Uh, 
look at the original movie for the blueprint or Ginger Snaps or Nightmare on Elm Street or even Scream 1 or all the Scream movies. And, and there's a host of other movies that you can look at as well. It's just those kind of come to my mind. Uh, the comedy in this one is just kind of borderline slapstick almost in some parts. And you're just like, eh, it kind of takes you out of the moment. Uh, number five. Talk about dated material. As soon as this movie starts, it screams the 90s. From the music to the fashion to the haircuts. Uh, that was all just really front and center in this movie. Uh, it just, and it kind of, I don't know, it, it, it dates it more even than what the original American Werewolf in London is. Just You just look at it and it's instant. 90s and the fashion and, and just everything about it. And it's just, it kind of, I don't know. Something about it just really hit me and is like, not perfectly perfect. Well done. A little bit too in your face. Number six. Again, the overused cliche of guy meets a girl and then they go through the story together. Of course, that's what you get in this movie as well. Number seven. And this happens in a lot of movies. And I get it. We're Americans. We're annoying. But... This movie portrays Americans as kind of stupid, loud, ditzy, uh, rude, whatever. And it may be true, but it's kind of a cliche at this point. Uh, number eight. Uh, again, I, I kind of touched on this a second ago. The musical score was mostly overshadowed by 90s sound. Uh, no real sense of mood or atmosphere or tension. And number nine. Uh, I believe his name is Chris. Um, he, uh, they all go to a party. I say a party in parentheses because it wasn't really a party party, but it was a party. When they go in, the door is barred. The guy outside, the, boun the, the bouncer... He bolts the door, you know, with a board and all that stuff. And, and uh, then the next scene, he's talking about leaving to go find, uh, to go see if he can find surfing. Surfing, surfing, Sarah, Siri, whatever you want to call her. And uh, they wouldn't have let him out. So I just, I just realized that uh, whenever I was thinking back and I went and kind of watched again real quick. Uh, a couple of clips and uh, they wouldn't have let him out to go find her <laughs> so that just kind of uh, hit me right at that right at that point okay now we're gonna go into things that I enjoyed oddly enough there is a list who knew number one lots of kills and lots of overused blood I was okay with that some people might not like the overuse of blood, uh, but I do. And there were some good kills. Number two. I want to say some of the transformations of the werewolves uh, looked okay-ish. Some, at some points, uh, some of it looked okay. Uh, there's one where, to me, probably the best one, I'm bad at her name. I'm just going to call her Surfy. <laughs> uh, she turns. And that's a cool sequence, actually, when she turns. Um, number three, the main characters, Andy, Brad, and Chris, are decently likable and portray their friendships fairly well. Number four, having a drug that can cause the transformation at any time uh, makes for an interesting twist. Number five. Some of the set design and different areas were decent. Especially the tunnels, the graveyard, the lab. Uh, there, was a, there was a couple of moments where things were pretty cool. Uh, I, mostly, I mostly like uh, the tunnels or catacombs or whatever you want to call them. Uh, they were pretty cool. 
Number six, the supposed connection between this movie and the original. That at least gives this movie some meat to the story. Uh, now see, I didn't even know anything about that until today or yesterday whenever I was looking up information on it. And uh, that's just, uh, that was in there saying that there was a connection, you know, with the, with the mom and the stepdad and this being their daughter and, you know, from the, from the werewolf and the original. So I didn't know. Uh, number seven, the subway scene. It had a good bit of chaos and tension and fear to it. It tried, I think, to do what the original movie did with the theater and the street scene. Uh, this is nowhere as effective as that scene, uh, but I think that they did okay. Uh, whenever we're first introduced to the werewolf in the subway, it's a really cool part. But then the CGI is just so obvious that it's kind of like, eh, it really starts, you start losing it at that point. Um, number eight, the ending fight where Andy finally gets the werewolf that turned him. It was done quickly and decently enough. And it's on the uh, subway scene as well. Number nine, the final scene with Andy, Surfy, and Chris. Uh, the very end scene. Uh, you'll see it at the very end. <laughs> uh, it was actually kind of fun and uh, cute. Uh, kind of a cute way to uh, wrap up the movie. Kind of uh, bringing it full circle back to where it started. Uh, you'll know that once you see it. Now I know I'm giving a lot of stuff away, but that's kind of how these things go. You know, we're talking about the movie. It's oh, you know, it's over 20 years old. Surely you've seen it by now. If not, I mean, I'm not really giving too much away. So, you know, it's still, if you want to watch it, it's still worth a watch. So, uh, kind of my final thoughts on it. Uh, at the end of the day, this movie falls way short of the brilliant original American Werewolf in London. Um, and as with most movies... Uh, the original movie didn't need a sequel. You know, it ended the way it ended, and it really didn't need a sequel, especially like 20 years later. I've probably only seen this movie about three times since it came out. I've wanted to watch it over the years, and I've stopped on it, you know, uh, to watch it, and but I don't click on it to watch it. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know if it's, it's it's just not something that I wanted to invest my time in. If I just if I remembered that I didn't like it a whole lot, or I don't know, there was just there's something about it that just don't quite hit well with me. So I don't know. It, it, it's a tough movie to take in for me. Uh, had we never had the first movie, this one might sit a little bit better with me uh, but when you compare this one to the original if I was gonna give the movies a score this one would probably get a 4 out of 10 and the original would be a 10 out of 10 anyways guys go and check all my other videos out check the playlist go in also and just check the regular regular video section because sometimes I just have videos uh, in the regular video section, but a lot of things are in the playlist. I think you'll find something for yourself and everyone else in the world, okay? Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, and don't forget to get up, get out, get ready, do it to it, and also check out my other channel. It's where I live stream video games, Old Mental Pickle. Old Mental is one word, and Pickle is the second word. Old Mental Pickle. And that's just strictly for streaming video games. Alright guys, I hope you enjoy everything, all the videos, everything I do for you, and I hope you enjoy your night. We'll see y'all later. Now go, maybe watch that movie. Mm.
It's up to you. See ya. Get up, get out, get ran, and 